previously on the Rod Peterson Show. You know, I want to say something. You say you're proud of them. I'm proud of you because you are not part of a term I just heard the other day, the hot take media. You're not that. You don't get into the fake hot news take. and all the stuff that I see. And I, and I like, I used to, I don't anymore because it's exhausting. But, you know, the talk of the flower being traded and so forth, at the end of the day, he never was. I mean, what do you see as the future for him? Like, do you think, like, when they came through here in Sunrise, I was one of the many people down at ice level taking photos because I thought it might be his last time that he'd come through. How much longer is this guy going to play, do you think? I mean, with uh, last night as an exception, he has been absolutely tremendous. He was named this week's NHL third star for, for helping and willing Minnesota into good position. Coming into this year, Marc-Andre Fleury was not supposed to be the starting goaltender. That job was going to be Philip Gustafson's. Philip Gustafson was going to have the lion's share of starts. Mar Marc-Andre Fleury was okay with that, and it did. It kind of felt like it would be his farewell tour. Uh, but with an injury to Philip Gustafson early on in the year and then just a lot of inconsistent play from Gus, Marc-Andre Fleury's really stepped up. And sometimes he's making you forget that he's 39 years old, the way that he was saving games again last night, uh, an exception. But I can see Marc-Andre Fleury playing another year. You're seeing right now, you know, I asked him last week, <sighs> usually he has been in a position where the team has already been in the playoffs. And right now he's trying to help and will a team into the playoffs. And he said he really likes that competition. He is a guy that is not ready to hang them up. I would not be surprised if he stuck around. And frankly, I would not be surprised if that stay, if he ends up staying in Minnesota and the Wild and Bill Guerin look at Philip Gustafson's contract extension that he made just a year ago. Uh, I think Marc-Andre Fleury would be a great mentor. Love having him around the locker room. And uh, he still has some juice left in that box. So I would think you'll get another year, Marc-Andre. And obviously, biasly, I'd love to see him stay here in Minnesota. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. No. Can't remember my roommate's name, but we couldn't get into the our our room. And two exotic dancers came down the hallway and said, "Here you go. Let us give you a hand with that." How about that? I was 16. It was like, whoa. Mandy at Edmonton has checked in. By the way, she says, "Hmm. Flashback. I did find glitter around an ex's house all the way into the bedroom. Now you know. No charge. This is the Rod Peterson Show." Oh, yeah, Director Jordan, you did have to open up with that, eh, on a football Friday. Oh, it's perfect. It fits right into my plans for a free-for-all Friday, Freedom Friday, and really a football Friday. Everybody settle on in to your favorite daytime sports talk show. We're coming at you live on the Game Plus Television Network. So many <laughs> thoughts flooded my mind when listening to that story when I was just a young lad, 16 years of age, in camp with the Brandon Wheat Kings. Jeff Rogers was there, Trevor Kidd. You may remember the names. That was at the Keystone Motor Inn. Let's bring in the Moose. Hey, Moose, I didn't want to take a turn to Weirdo Town, but I will say this. At our tailgate party last weekend here for the Florida Panthers, the organizer, Alex, had green glitter in his beard. And I was like, hey, Alex, did you make a stop at the dollhouse on the way here? Huh? Huh? <laughs> and he's like, no, no. Just watch out for the glitter, man. Just watch out for the glitter. Are you... Tell everybody where you're at today. It's like, where's Waldo? But it's, where's Moose? <laughs> Yeah, Palm Desert, California. We made it in last night. Uh, uh, what was it? Yeah, about 11 o'clock at night, local time. Jumped into bed, and uh, we're going to call it. I uh, got a full night's sleep, so feeling like a million bucks. I know I was asking you about sleep debt, um, but you know what? Feeling great, so uh, happy to be here. Yeah, don't ask me about sleep debt, man. I hope to never, ever be there again. Been there, wrote the book, bought the T-shirt. Uh, coming up on the program today, some of our best football friends, Jim Barker, five-time Great Cup champion, football insider, live from the CFL Combine in Winnipeg, and Farhan Lalji, also from the CFL Combine in Winnipeg. Can you hit the quick six show horn, please? Director Jordan, boo ba boom <laughs> boo ba boom and for those Panthers fans that stopped me on the concourse last night and said, we don't talk enough Florida Panthers and even lightning on this show, like, we have a little coming up, but not a lot. That's not what we do here. That's another show. But my big story, I don't know what your big story is, but my big story remains the NHL. The last night, Jack Hughes scored two of the Devils, three power play goals. Brother Luke Hughes had a career-best three assists, and New Jersey stunned 
The red hot Winnipeg Jets 4 1 in one of their best performances in a disappointing season for New Jersey. Nico Heischer scored the go ahead goal on the power play, added two helpers. Timo Meyer had an empty netter and two assists, and Jake Allen. Made 18 saves and winning for the third time in four starts for New Jersey. Just a couple notes. I'm not going to run through the whole NHL from last night, but there's a few leftovers here today that we're going to sink our teeth into. Here in Sunrise, Philip Forsberg scored twice, and Nashville extended their franchise record point streak to 16 games with a 3 0 win over Florida. Uh, up at Edmonton, Zach Hyman scored his 47th and 48th goals, the second in Edmonton's five goal third period. And the Oilers overcame a two-goal deficit to route Buffalo 8-3. And out in Vancouver, West Coast, where you are, defenseman Nikita Zadorov scored twice in the first period. Casey DeSmith made 16 saves in Western Conference, leading Vancouver beat struggling Montreal 4-1. Those were some of the games I was paying attention to. Honestly, I told you that I was sick before we went to air. It's that kind of flu and cold where your eyeballs hurt, you know, um, your hair hurts. And it was, I wouldn't have gone to the Panthers game last night. But I wanted to see my guy, the agent to the stars, Big Fresh, who I know is watching right now in Naples, Florida. Hey, Gil, I, I, I guarantee I'm past the incubation stage, Gil, so I didn't pass, I didn't pass the bug to anybody. But he was there <laughs> with his, his client, Barry Trotz, the general manager of the Predators. And it was funny because in the press box in between periods, Gil was like, Trotz, see, this is my guy, Rod Peterson. Rod Peter, he was the voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders for 20 years. And I believe it was Barry goes... And the Regina Pats sticks his hand. He knew. He's a former captain of God's team. So, listen, all the Panthers fans are upset, and uh, they're on a three-game losing streak. Two of those games, they've been shut out, and they're spit-talking everybody on social media, and Paul Maurice doesn't know what he's doing, blah, blah, blah. We do host the Cats and Bolts podcast where we talk about the Panthers and the Lightning there. And last night... I said on that Twitter account, I'd rather be in a losing streak now than in the playoffs. And this lady wrote me and said, I don't know how you managed to stay so positive. And I'm like, you're just getting to know me, lady. Positive is the way. You have a choice. You can be negative. You can be positive. Either way, you're going to be right eventually. So I, I prefer to believe the Panthers are going to figure it out. I really do. And I'm not going to sit here and let it ruin my day because there's so many other things going on. That's my takeaways from last night. It was a great night. Other than I had a handful of press box treats, Tootsie Rolls, a sucker. I left the wrappers in the door of Serena's car. She just sent me a picture of it. She's like, what the hell is this? I pulled the DuPont and left the garbage no. in the car. I, le oh, I left no. the evidence. I left the evidence. So it's a, fun, it's a fun game for her. Driving home, eating all these candies, and then stuffed them in the door of her car and forgot to pull them out when I got home. Busted! Do you have any NHL leftovers last night? Other than you beat me 10-7 in the breakaway bets, by the way. Just wanted to point that I out. I was too. looking last night, and I was, you know what? I pulled together quite a good night. 9-10 uh, wins I knew I had, so feeling pretty good about that. Um, the Oilers, I wanted to sit on this for a second because sure. how many, and Oiler fans will know this intimately, where you're in a dog fight for 40 minutes and then the third period rolls along and they put four or five goals away. How many times has that happened this year? Four, five, six goals. It's almost like, you know, you're, you're horsing around with the little brother, but then when he gets a little bit too pushy, you put him in his place and you set him down. Um, I wonder if that's going to, it's my only concern about the Oilers. I mean, goaltending, we've kind of, Skinner has played really well and has proven he can be a, a guy who can take them where he needs to go. They've got scoring, they've improved the blue line. But is this a problem? Because in the playoffs, there's no erasing multi goal deficits in the last couple of minutes, typically, and scoring five or six goals in a third period. It's so much tougher to score. Teams are so much better defensively, they play better. So I think the Oilers, I'm a little concerned that they're not getting off to good starts if there's something that needs to be cleaned up here down the stretch. That's digging pretty far. I was saying this, yeah, it when is. you and I are making our picks on, on a daily basis. You can, we always pick the Oilers to win, and they always win, right? That, 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 that used to be the Panthers, which incidentally, they weren't as good as that when they won 13 in a row, and they're not as bad as you all think, even though they've lost three in a row now. So chill. BW in Edmonton writes in and says, preach it, Rod. It's your choice to be positive. Absolutely. 
Jeff, the Stamps fan, says people that leave their garbage in my car are annoying. Only I can do that. Yeah, I tried to cure Darren of that, but I never did. I failed. And now I'm doing it. You know what? You flipped me. What? <laughs> no. Uh, it, it's, it's good. I, it, it wasn't me. I remember the road trip, but oh, I don't need that. to speak. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you the. <laughs> Who was it? Give, it me was name. Give me a name. It was Myers in the back seat. Hot damn. Derek Duke Myers left his garbage in my car. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're going to have to wear it. Ah, uh, Casey in Winnipeg <laughs> writes in and says, Life couldn't be better. Listen to Rod and watching players at the combine. Glad to have you, Casey. Appreciate you. Wayne in BC says, It's the old cup is half full. Thought process. I agree 100%, Rod. Listen, I've been both. It's better to be positive. Trust me, it takes a lot less energy, but it takes a lot more balls. By the way, we got a lot of CFL stuff coming up. So for the CFL fans that have tuned in for that, and by the way, we've got Jim Barker and Farhan Lalji live from the Combine. So that's going to be great. I got I to gotta pick it up here. Um, so another big story. I don't know if it is for you, but it is March Madness. I just got to read this. Kentucky... And their coach, John Calipari, didn't get through the first round of March Madness again. For the second time in three years, the Wildcats were bounced by a double-digit seed. Oakland shocked Kentucky 80-76 to in the opening round of the Midwest region of Pittsburgh. I'm a far bigger Kentucky fan now after watching, what was the Netflix show that was based in Kentucky? Not Shameless, uh, Justified. I'm a Kentucky fan now because of the show. What does Raylan Gibbons Think of Kentucky getting bounced from March Madness last night. That's what I want to know. Or Boyd Crowder. Calipari has lost four of his past five NCAA tournament openers. Uh, so that's one of the... There was a lot that went down. I don't know if you probably didn't have time to open your picks from the bracket from Enterprise Sports that we're in. I was about 50-50 on opening day. Everybody here is all geeked up and excited about FAU for obvious reasons. They're playing Northwestern at Barclays this afternoon. Well, they're tipping off here right away. FAU Owls. They went to the Final Four last year, so everybody's excited here. And I'm just, I'm going to move into the CFL stuff now. Other than, do you have anything to add on March Madness before I move on? I opened the bracket, man. I was up in second place on opening day on the Enterprise bracket. So off, off to a good start in Kentucky. I'll be, I'll, I was going to tweet this, but I'm like, my followers really don't care. Um, so I didn't. Uh, so I can say it here. I had Kentucky losing in the next round anyways. So a loss upset on the opening day, not really a big deal for my bracket. Um, I don't have my gong here. Well, I have it, but not that close. John Ohm says, boom, balls to be positive. Boom. Trust me, it does, because you take a lot of flack. So that takes balls to take flack and take it on the chin. It's real easy to be negative. Don't be that guy. Um, Yeah, I got to I got to stay out of the comments. It's not that time now. So, cuz it's a football Friday and the, the, what's going on in the NFL isn't as exciting as a week ago when the free agency was going on. There are some notes that I'll get to later. But it's football Friday. Do I need to remind people we're on national television across Canada? So we're going to talk about Canadian things, and that includes the Canadian Football League cuz I love it and it's the Rod Peterson show. Now, before we get to that combine stuff, which, to be honest, it is the Underwear Olympics, and I don't really care. I understand that my guy, Robert Mims, his kid, Deshaun Mims, put up a bunch of be bench press reps yesterday. Awesome. I saw the list from the CFL. It's all good. It's all good. But this has got me a little more. Two things have me more interested. One, I guess the Ottawa Red Blacks are having a contest or a poll to decide who's the greatest Red Black of all time. And to be honest... I love that stuff. I'd far rather talk about that than what's going on at the Combine. 30% uh, of the kids there will never even play a game, maybe more. Um, so number one, it's Henry Burris, right? It's Hank, right? Why are we having a contest? Unless you think it's somebody else. Um, no, it's probably, it's, well, it's got to be Hank. Now, how far back are we going? I mean, I know we're going just with the Ottawa Red Blacks. So, yes. 2014. It's Henry Burris. 2014. <laughs> yeah. So, you can't go back. You know, it's funny when you say Ottawa, my mind goes back to the Renegades. You know, I didn't experience the Rough Riders, so I'm not going there. And there's some great players, obviously. All-timers have played with the Rough Riders. But my mind goes back to the Renegades and Kerry Joseph and Josh Ronick 
back in those days. How about that? It's the face of the Renegades. But you're no doubt it's Henry Burris for the Red Box. Well, that was easy. Why are we having a contest? <laughs> <laughs> another, another name that came to mind was Keith Scholigan. But that's personal favorite, Sholo. But he was a great Ottawa Red Black. So these are kind of the fun things that teams do, especially the poor ones that aren't winning. You got to get a reason to get people excited. Must be Friday. Do you hear that horn going off? Oh, yeah. Now it stopped. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, greatest red black? It's too early in franchise history for that. Yeah, well, we're doing it. So we can either get on board or don't. Um, yeah. So the, the next thing is this. Who's, I think it was Clark's idea. Who's the face of the CFL right now? Because it was on Jeopardy this week. And listen, I'm not the biggest game show guy. I know people that sit and watch game shows all day, and that's cool. We have a network here, Game TV, that airs them. I'll watch some. But Jeopardy was always one of my favorites. I enjoyed it. And this week, for those that missed it, we have talked about it on this show, but the CFL came up on Jeopardy, and Cody Fajardo was named. Leading people to, on it by the host. What's the guy's name? Ken Jennings? Bill I Jennings? Know. Grant Jennings? Oh, no. Okay. That Jennings guy, I haven't watched since Alex Trebek passed. Speaking, Ken, thanks. Speaking of great Canadians, Alex Trebek. So we came up with this. Who is the face of the Canadian Football League? Clearly, I'm going to say Cody Fajardo. We struggled a little bit for, for a variety of reasons to come up with who is the face of the Canadian Football League right now. And you can, you can debate it amongst yourselves why that is. And by the, poll, by the way, the poll is brought to you by Key Yorkton Kia. Unleash the future. Kia EV6 GT at Key Yorkton Kia where performance and innovation go hand in hand. Go to keyorktonkia.com or call 306-783-2772 for more information. The 23 Kia EV6 GT, movement that inspires. So we came up with this. And I actually, it's on the YouTube poll. I didn't even tweet it yet because I'm not comfortable with the list that we came up with. Cody Fajardo, quarterback of Montreal. Brady Olivera, Olivera, the reigning top Canadian, running back for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Vernon Adams Jr. of the BC Lions. And the fourth option was other, right, Clark? Bingo! Yeah, we kicked around Willie Jefferson. For me, I saw Willie was at the Combine. Um, there, Chad Kelly, obviously, he's the reigning most outstanding player, but I didn't feel like giving Randy Ambrosia a coronary today, so we didn't put him in the poll, <laughs> Chad Kelly. So, who's your top three and other? Did we name it right? Yeah. I think Zach Caleros needs to be in that list. You kind of wonder if you can have two guys wow. from the same team, but when Winnipeg's been so good, um, I think it's, it's um, the worthy yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would have, I, a lot of times in the CFL, it's not a player, it's a coach. I would have said, you know, it was funny for a while. It was really Chris Jones. It could have been Mike O'Shea before they lost. If, yeah. if Ryan Dinwiddie was a little, if Ryan Dinwiddie was a little more up, at, with, you know, um, interested in the media and that kind of thing. I don't think he's negative in the media, but he has an opportunity to kind of jump into that role. Um, it's oftentimes pinball, but we see what's going on with the Argos. You know, is it Ambrosi um, that's the face of the league, positively or negatively for some fans? Um, I like our list. I'm pretty comfortable with it. But I think Caleros it, it needs to be right up in that mix for sure. Uh, so that's the poll for Key Wheaton, Key York and Key, and we'll be talking about it throughout the program today. Uh, Max is watching in Toronto. He's 21 years of age. It says on his profile, he writes in on the Sober Carpenter text line, 902-518-3033. He says, why doesn't TSN or Sportsnet promote the CHL playoffs and road to the Memorial Cup as a March Madness type bracket? Here's how I would answer that, Max. Ask them, not us. We'll be back. We're only halfway through the Quick Six Show tour, uh, topics. We got Jim Barker on the way as well as Farhad Lalji. We are live on Game Plus Television, WQEE, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live.
The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's life. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, everybody, uh, it's time for your daily reminder to reward your love of movies. Sign up for Landmark Extras for free today. Get more of what you love. Free movies and concession items, invitations to exclusive screenings, special events, and more. There's three programs for you to choose from to fit your lifestyle better. Go to LandmarkCinemas.com for details or to sign up for free. Well, here it is. So many people have been waiting for this all week. We're going live to the CFL Combine. TSN's Jim Barker joins us from there. Looks quiet there right now, JB, but is this... Is this Christmas for you, it kind of feels like it might be. Oh, it's the best. Last night, we, we, they ran their 40s and did all their tests and during the day yesterday. Today, it's football. Today, they're going to, the, the players are down stretching. They're getting ready for a full practice, coached by CFL coaches, and they'll, they'll run Skelly and they'll run inside run and do all the things that are football things so that you can take the numbers. And there were some really impressive numbers. This is a really impressive group of, of young athletes. So um, they'll take those things, and coaches will now say, okay, how will they fit into my system? So, uh, you know, it was, a, it, it was an exciting night. 
not too many injuries. You mentioned Deshaun Mims, uh, and unfortunately, he pulled a muscle in the run in those 40s, so he's not going to be involved in any of this. Uh, so that was not a great thing, but he was the one player you mentioned, and so I thought I'd bring that up, that he did pull a hamstring in that, in that 40. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Ryan Berta of Queens threw up the most bench press reps at 30. Owen Mueller of Windsor had 29. A couple guys tied with 25. Uh, Deshaun Mims placed fourth in the vertical jump with 37 inches. But I was, and Michael Herzog of Hillsdale College out of Windsor had the highest vertical jump at 39 inches. I was thinking about this last night. I was watching NHL hockey, and there was a guy there that, and when he was in the combine, the NHL combine, he he couldn't do a chin up, and everybody thought he was so weak, and he dropped in the draft. When they found out later, he was recovered from a separated shoulder. He's too afraid to tell anybody. So when 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 you said it's not a bad thing to opt out, I think that's got people thinking that maybe it's better to say I can't, I'm hurt. Well, I I kind of disagree with that. I think there's a lot of players that really improve their stock. Guys who were maybe going to be low first round picks, maybe moved up to be in a a higher pick or a guy who was going to be a, a Ben LeBros. He, 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 he long jumped 11 feet. Now, I don't think there were three guys in the NFL draft. I, again, I don't know at the NFL combine that went that far. I mean, he, that kid, he improved his stock incredibly ran in the four fives. He, he weighed 189 pounds and he plays when you watch him on tape, you know, he's six foot tall. I thought he was about, you know, a buck 60 or something. He looks, because he moves so well, he looks too small. Comes in and weighs 190. Guys like that can move up two, three rounds. They can go from being what you project on film, maybe a fourth or fifth round pick. Now all of a sudden you're talking about a second round pick or possibly even a lower first round pick. So I think opting out, I, I don't know that that helps you. I, I mean, obviously there's, there's about, I think, four or five offensive linemen that are not here that are doing pro days. There's a, a couple receivers. Uh, Nick Martiner, the youngster from Auburn, is doing the pro day at Auburn uh, to get that last look from the NFL. Uh, but most of the players that are going to be the top picks are at this combine. And that is rare uh, to see this many of them. Uh, and it's going to be and like I say, the end of the weekend, there's going to be a lot of questions answered and a lot of meetings taking place prior to the April 30th draft. Off the top of your head, if you can remember, we had a Joe, a Joe on here yesterday. You know all about him. Clemson, USF, Garden City Junior College. Is it, is it a 4.8440 is what I heard this guy ran? Yesterday, yeah, the and then he backed it up with a four nine six. He had a bad; it was a bad day for him. I don't; he didn't really excel in anything. I thought he would vertical jump. You know, the guy as a high jumper in Alberta, two, and again, you have to help me because I don't, I don't know this metric stuff as well as you. Two point two meters in the high jump when he was 15, 16 years old. So I'm expecting that he's going to vertical jump. 38, 39, and he vertical jump 34. Uh, again, he's got a lot to prove as a player. And I interviewed him. We did TSN team interviews. So we interviewed like a team. And I interviewed a Joe, a Joe, and he's a very interesting young man. He's playing for all the right reasons. Uh, again, he's, he's not sure, I think, right now of where he is as a player. He needs to learn how to be a football player. Because if he doesn't enter this thing, in the right frame of mind, not only the combine, but whatever team he goes to, in the right frame of mind that I have a long way to go. I'm a great athlete, but I'm not a great football player right now. And that's what he's got to, he'll show some out here where he's at in terms of being able to release and run routes and go after the ball and catch the ball cleanly, those kinds of things. They'll be able to see that here. But just in terms of football instincts and things, he's way behind. And I told him, I said, you know, you left Clemson, and if he stayed at Clemson, and he admits this, he thinks that was a huge mistake. He probably told you that leaving Clemson was a mistake for him. Um, and then he went to South Florida. That staff gets fired. He ends up at Garden City. Well, if he goes into a CFL camp with the wrong thing, he's going to end up at the Garden City Community College of Life after he's done in the CFL because he'll be done quickly. And it, with him... A lot of it is going to be mental and him learning what it takes to be a pro football player. I really, really like the kid. 
I do think he needs to understand how much he has to learn. There's a lot more to be in a wide receiver in professional football than being able to run run fast, which he didn't do. Uh, he, he only weighed 212. He went to Clemson at 230. And again, it was the most shocking thing of the draft to me was his speed and, the, and just his overall athleticism. He sure looks the part, but he's got a lot to learn as a receiver. Well, you've seen a million of these guys come and go. And what I remember from the interview was he referred to himself in the third person through the whole interview yesterday. I was like, what? A Joe, a Joe is going to get, going to be great. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, whatever. Um, Hey, you got some quarterbacks there that were born in the States, but have non-import uh, designation. That's going to help with the drills. And I can't remember, do they count now to your starting seven? Canadian if quarterbacks, do they make that change? If they're, if they're a starter, they, they, they count. If they don't start, it doesn't give you any benefit, which I think they can change that rule and allow that Canadian who's a backup quarterback to count on your roster. Because roster management is such a big part of this. If they did that, a backup Canadian quarterback would allow teams to have an extra designated import. It would give them another player because now they don't have to count, you know, that American quarterback as an American. So that's that's the thing I would push for at this point because I think quarterbacks are making a move. You're the, one of the youngsters you're talking about, Casey Bauman from Augustana in South Dakota. And again, it's going to be really interesting. He came in and he he was six foot six and he ran decently four eight five in that vicinity. Uh, again, there were so many of them. I, I, he was right in the four eight five range. Um, you know, he's a, he's going to be very interesting to watch. Ben Miracle is fighting an injury. He's just off of uh, surgery, so how much he's going to be able to do, um, we'll find out. So yeah, there's some quarterbacks here that can. It's going to be a great experience for them. Most of the eyes are on Casey Bauman uh, because he did play quite a bit at Division II Augustana in South Dakota. So, uh, again, I thought he was, he, he was coming from the other Augustana. But when I saw it with South Dakota, it's a little bit higher level. And so it's going to be interesting to watch him, watch him perform here. And then, like I say, the CFL, I just think, needs to make this move to allow a backup quarterback to count as a Canadian on the roster. Uh, the viewers have some questions. They'd like to know what the buzz is on rule changes and will there be officially kickoff change rules to the XFL style maybe as early as this season? Well, they've put it off. They've put it off for a week. And here's my, here's my take on this. First of all, I think the, the kickoff and the whole kicking game, we shouldn't mess with. It's such a big part of what we do. They backed it up uh, last time. I mean, if they want to do the what the NFL did and put guys on the line so they can't get a running start, that, I, I could I could buy that. But the whole thing of what the XFL did, where guys line up downfield, and uh, or the the one that really bothers me is after a touchdown, you have the option of taking the ball at the forty yard line. Well, teams are going to do that all the time. Well, I look at Chris Jones in Edmonton. He goes out and gets Boris Beatty who gives them a huge advantage. He's a valuable player because I'll bet the Argos had more teams starting inside the 25 because of how far he kicks off. So they go out in free agency and sign him. And again, you think of it as, okay, teams are going to be starting inside the 25 now because we have Boris Beatty and he kicks the ball off so deep, it's going to be a great field position thing. They go out and, and um, they sign the special teams player of the year, Leak. Javon Leak from, from the Argos. So they signed two, the best returner. And then they go change the rules, you know, a week before they, the, or two weeks before the draft. I think that's wrong. I hope they put it off for another year. So at least teams know going into free agency um, what the rules are going to be. Because if they put the rule in about your choice, like they have in field goals, about your, it's your choice. If they put that rule in now, basically it makes... Boris Beattie and his kickoff abilities minimized greatly because teams are just going to take the ball to 40. They're not going to mess with, they're not going to mess with having the, the, any return. And I think it just takes such a huge part of what our game is away. That's my personal take on it. You're the first person that's asked me about it, but that's my, my take on it. Okay, well, I'm interested. Uh, by the way, BW in Edmonton went to Google and says... Uh, 2.2 meters or whatever you said is 7.2 feet. So he could jump over Andre the Giant. 
Uh, we're talking wow. about a Joe with Joe. What so he did in high school. Seven foot high jumper uh, at 15 or 16. Seven foot imagine? high jumper at seven. Uh, Unbelievable. Yeah, how does that not continue? That's or get stronger. Um, every week, Kirk in Toronto writes in and asks me to ask you, and every week I forget, who's going to be the Argos defensive coordinator? Have they named it? Yes, it's going to be uh, Kevin Iben and Will Fields in a co-coordinator position. So they've added Demetrius Maxey. I'm guessing, and I've talked to both Kevin and Will, congratulated on them. They're very excited. They're here at the Combine looking at players. Um, but they'll share the duties. Kevin's coach obviously was a great player in the league um, and uh, coaches the linebackers. Willie coaches the back end. Um, both guys played for me. Willie played for me in Calgary. Kevin, obviously, with Toronto. So uh, they're both very capable guys. They've been in the CFL a long time, and it, it's a really neat opportunity for them. I do believe they need to add another coach to that side of the football to help those guys. So, uh, it's yeah, again, it's going to be a, a young, in terms of experience, it's going to be a, a young coaching staff on that side of the ball and a big change from having Corey Mace there. Uh, lastly, we'll go a little long here, but Clay and Brandon wants to know who you think is the best receiver in the combine. Actually, I I have a Kevin Mattal from Laval. I, yesterday before this started, I said, this guy is Nick Dembski, but he weighs 20 pounds more. He's 229. Uh, you know, he's... And amazingly, Nick Dembski at his combine ran 4.58. Mattel ran four five eight. He's a he's a guy who just has the things it takes. He's a blocker. He's a, he's just a great football player. He's he's kind of my favorite here. Kevin Clarcius from Connecticut, another outstanding receiver. Uh, uh, here's a great story. So Dell um, Dell Busby Duncan Busby. Um, he's from Bemidji State, and I interviewed him. And I said, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you, Dell. On film, you look like you're a four seven five, and it's tough to play in the CFL as a four seven five receiver. And he says, I promise I'm gonna run under four six. And I said, Wow, I that that's that's pretty pretty awesome if you do. Sure enough, he runs a four five eight, and I mean, he was on a beeline up here to let me know I did it. I, he promised me he'd do it. He did it. So he's improved his stock because he is an outstanding blocker runs great routes. He has more big plays on film than any receiver in this draft. Um, my problem with him was his top end speed, but he ran, uh, he ran in the four five. So he's, but he's, he's helped himself a lot. So there's some good receivers in this, in this thing. Uh, two receivers aren't here. Uh, uh, Kevin Martiner, uh from Auburn uh, isn't here. And there's a, a youngster named Mathis out of North Dakota state that I, I'm not sure he's gotten his, Canadian status, I, there was something there, who's a six foot six kid uh, at, out of North Dakota State. So those are the only two receivers that aren't here. So we're going to know a lot more here at the end of the weekend. But, but Mattel is my guy that I think he's just a special player and he fits our league. He understands it. He's going to play that Dembski position, the R, the inside slot where he can block. And he's, like I said, Nick, I, I would say Dembski's probably 210. This kid's 229 and ran it just as fast and on film he's got the same moxie as as Dembski has and to me that's kind of the the guy you try to compare yourself if you're a Canadian receiver coming into the league outstanding uh, report Jim enjoy the football keep up the great work there we're enjoying it and uh, say hey to Marshall Ferguson for us and have a great weekend absolutely thanks Rod our football analyst he uh, joins us every Friday Jim Barker presented by EMJ Marketing Speakers Bureau. They will find the perfect keynote speaker for your event. Contact Joe at emjmarketing.com. We'll be right back live on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. 
We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be here by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. I tell you what, time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? Um, so I'm trying to bring up the poll on my YouTube here. The daily poll question brought to you lovingly by Key Yorkton Kia. Where the heck is it? I can't get it open. I'm so technolog technologically inept. It is who's the face of the Canadian Football League? And our options are what, Clark? Cody Fajardo, Vernon Adams Jr., Zach Claros? Oh, Brady Oliveira or other. Uh, I wasn't, yeah, because I didn't tweet it. I, was, I wanted the audience participation uh, before I tweeted it. And Wayne, sorry, Randy in Cochrane, Alberta writes in, Randy Nickel, as a matter of fact, and he says, today's quiz is all ex-rider quarterbacks. Way to go, rider brass. So that was in Darren's three. Cody Fajardo, Zach Caleros, Vernon Adams Jr. or other. And it's like, but let's give them all contract extensions. <laughs> That'll fix him. But it's not. Brady Oliveira is the third in there, the running back for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So I wanted to make sure I had that right, who it was. Who's, is Cody leading, by the way, Clark, I would assume? on Because I haven't tweeted it, like I said. Cody must be leading. 
or maybe not. Yeah. 59% Cody's running away with it. Mine, Cody. Good always wins. Write it down. A sports update, as promised. Canadian basketball superstar. Can we get rid of it? Can we lose the poll? Canadian superstar Shea Gilgis Alexander makes his only appearance in front of his hometown crowd this NBA season tonight when the Oklahoma City Thunder visit the Toronto Raptors. The guard from Hamilton is second in the league with an average of 30.9 points per game. The sinking Raptors wah, 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 have lost eight games in a row. Am I the only one on television calling them the Craptors? The Carolina Hurricanes look for a sixth straight win when they visit the Washington Capitals in NHL play tonight. The Hurricanes enter the game two points back of the New York Rangers for top spot in the Metropolitan Division and well ahead of the third place Philadelphia Flyers. The Caps are three points behind Detroit for the Eastern Conference's second wildcard spot with two games in hand. Meanwhile, the Winnipeg Jets enter the day in top spot in the NHL Central Division, but they might not be there by Saturday. The Idle Jets are tied with Colorado and Dallas with 93 points, but hold top spot thanks to tiebreakers. The hard-charging Avalanche have won seven straight and host Columbus tonight, so you can make it eight, while Dallas hosts Pittsburgh. And in the late game tonight, Arizona home to Seattle. The, we'll play the breakaway bets next hour with Moose when he rejoins us from beautiful Palm Springs, California. Lucky him, huh? The World Women's Curling Championship continues today in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Canada's Rachel Homan enters the day leading the table at 10 and 0 and has already qualified for a playoff spot. Her team plays Scotland this afternoon and South Korea in the late draw. Our sports updates are brought to you by Common Crown Brewing Company, turning your everyday common beer into a unique and exceptional experience. Visit commoncrown.ca where they know, where they know the best beer is the one that's earned. And also, finally, the day has arrived. Landmark Cinemas in theaters today. Right now, it's showing Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. In the latest Ghostbusters installment, the Spangler family returns to where it all started, the iconic New York City firehouse, to team up with the original Ghostbusters who've developed a top secret research lab, top secret research lab to take busting ghosts to the next level, starring Paul Rudd, Annie Potts, Dan Aykroyd, and more. Starting next week, we'll start talking about some other movies, but for now, check out Ghostbusters. And to be honest, if I was feeling a little better, a little more up to snuff, I'd be going to Ghostbusters today, but I don't want to be populating the theater. I don't feel 100%. And uh, I'll be writing you back here, Gil. I, 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 hope, I hope I didn't make people sick at the Panthers game last night, but I had to go and see my guy. But when you have uh, the flu slash cold, your brain's not working too good, right? Brain fog. And yesterday when we talked about what's the best Bill Murray movie besides Ghostbusters, it wasn't my question. It came from Landmark Cinemas. What's the best movie besides Ghostbusters? And we had the options of Caddyshack, Stripes, What About Bob, Groundhog Day, Scrooged, St. Vincent. I forgot about the best one of them all. Mike Drop Worthy, and that's Kingpin. It's not even close. Didn't I tell you to call me Big Earn? It's Kingpin. It's better than Ghostbusters, I'm sorry. We'll be right back with viewer takeover, so get your questions in, everybody. Moose returns in hour two, and Farhan Lalji will join us then as well. We are live on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. 
Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rod. All right, welcome back, everybody. Come on, pots light. Let's go with the comments. 902-518-3033. 902-518-3033. I can sit here and read the sports if you want. Maybe that's what you want. It is a sports talk show. But it's the Rod Peterson Show. We got a lot of time here, Clark tells me in my ear, before the end of hour one. So let's go back and forth. Let's wrap. There's a lot of things. I'd like to know what's in your sports vortex here today. It is a football Friday. The Red Blacks are set. For those that don't know, that's the pro football team in Ottawa. Their name's the Red Blacks. I don't get it either, but that's their name. They're running a contest. Who's the greatest one ever? It's Henry Burris. That was easy. But what are your thoughts? I'm following March Madness, but I was like 50-50 on opening day in my bracket through the Enterprise Sports Podcast in Philadelphia, who's invited Moose and I to go in every year. So I'm not done, done, but I'm not going to win it. I'm following FAU, the Florida Atlantic Owls, who play 3.5 miles as the crow flies from here right now in the Eleanor K. Baldwin Arena. They're leading Northwestern 16-12. Everybody's down at the yard house. And if I watching it, and if I was not battling a cold, I'd be going down there too, enjoying 50% off happies. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to jump into the latest on the Shohei Otani thing in a second, but wherever you're watching, I want a, a bit of a free for all Friday if you can. 902 518 3033. 
for Sober Carpenter. Randy and Cochran. Glad to have you with me, Randy. How's it look, my guy? He is a TV guy and a restaurant guy by trade. He's kind of a jack of all trades. He says, what about Best Picture nominee Lost in Translation, where Bill Murray was nominated for Best Actor? How about that? What about it? <laughs> what about it? I never watched it. Come on, you're going to say you put it up against Kingpin? That thing was a cinemagraphic masterpiece. Getting Munson out here in the middle of nowhere. And also loved Stripes, Randy says, and I did recite some lines from it yesterday. Here we go with all the movies again. Camper 27 in Winnipeg writes in and says, Damn, it looks like I missed Jim's segment painting going on here. Life's about priorities, Camper. It's about choices. Jeff the Stams fan says Stamford was screwed out of an upset over Kansas last night. Right? Oh, I heard. The late whistle, right? Oh, I'm on top of it. I'm a little surprised that as many people care about March Madness. But I guess when it's crammed down your throat, you don't have a choice. The viewer was, uh, wrote in here earlier, Max from Toronto, was saying, why doesn't TSN and Sportsnet do a March Madness-type bracket promoting the junior hockey that they do and formerly broadcast? I don't know. You're asking the wrong guy. As a guy that used to broadcast the WHL on Shaw, um, I don't know the answers to your questions, bro. Ask them. To the quick six show topics that I didn't get to, Shohei Otani's interpreter is being criminally investigated by the IRS. That doesn't sound good. And the attorney for his alleged bookmaker said Thursday that the ex-Dodgers employee placed bets on international soccer, but not baseball. The IRS confirmed Thursday that interpreter Ipe Mitsuhara and Matthew Bauer, the bookie, are under criminal investigation through the agency's Los Angeles field office. IRS criminal investigation spokesperson Scott Villiard said he could not provide additional details. Their 39-year-old interpreter, Mizuhara, was fired by the Dodgers on Wednesday following reports from the LA Times and ESPN about his alleged ties to an illegal bookie and debts of well over a million dollars. Now, oh man, I don't want to take this turn the compassionate person in me would say, maybe he's got a problem. Maybe he's got a gambling addiction. Does it matter? No. Off with his head. But it's a disease. Doesn't matter. Somebody's got to pay. Well, if he pays, fine. I hope Otani, if he is innocent of anything, I hope Otani's fine. And it looks like he's going to be fine. Uh, and here's an NFL note. A judge says a federal lawsuit against the NFL's disability plan can proceed to trial. The potential class action on behalf of retired players accuses the NFL of routinely denying valid injury claims so that it won't have to make disability payments. Who oh boy. Let's hope that's not the only news coming out of the National Football League in the last 24 hours. We'll find some more when we come back in hour two with the Moose. We're going to play tonight's NHL breakaway bets. And free for all Friday, whatever you'd like to talk about. Get on the blower. Get right in us. We'll be back after this brief pause on Game Plus and Key Radio. the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. 
Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. If it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Text 902-518-3033. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. No! Can't remember my roommate's name. But we couldn't get into the, our, our room. And two exotic dancers came down the hallway and said, here you go, let us give you a hand with that. How about that? I was 16. It was like, whoa. Mandy at Edmonton has checked in, by the way. She says, hmm, flashback. I did find glitter around an ex's house all the way into the bedroom. Now you know. No charge. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. Breaking news, we are heading into the final hour of the week. How about that? It's been a great week. It's been a very busy week, um, but not nearly as busy for me and you as it has been for this guy, Darren Moose DuPont. <laughs> How happy are you, Moose, to be heading into the weekend and in Palm Springs, California, too, I might add? Yeah, pretty good. I, uh, I texted you uh, last night and said, you know, Feels good to be in America with you, you know, and um, it, it feels good to be in the sun and going to rest and recharge a little bit over the weekend, watch some basketball, some hockey. It's going to be a good weekend. You know, I can't say much as I'm sitting here in Florida about this, but I do remember one time, and if my guy Mighty Mike is watching right now, he'll attest that this is true, that I said it. I was sitting at the departure gate, the WestJet departure gate at the Calgary airport that was headed to, I was walking by the gate that was headed to Palm Springs. I don't know where I was going. I was on a road trip somewhere. It looked like a box of Q-tips. All lined up Q-tips. <laughs> Little white dotted heads. Is that what it looked like when you were headed down to Palm Springs? Were you a, a little out of place, Moose? Uh, yeah, you know what? Um, I flew into L.A., so I didn't have that full experience. Ah. I've actually never flown in to the Palm Springs airport. Um, I fly to LA, uh, hit the spots there, and then uh, and then drive out to Palm Springs. So no, I didn't see the box of Q-tips, but I can picture it. It literally looked like a box of Q-tips. It's the way my mind works. <laughs> Anyways, clearly I'm ready for a fun weekend. How about y'all? 
902-518-3033 is the number to reach us here in the in this Florida studio. He's in Palm Springs, as I said. 902-518-3033 is the Sober Carpenter text line for Sober Carpenter non-alcoholic craft beers. We've had some good comments come in. We're going to have some fun discussion here. And I just want to put this out for discussion's sake. Well, two things before it escapes me. I want to say hey to our guys that are flying the plane at Game Plus Television in Toronto. Early ratings data says, and you know what I'm talking about, Moose, the ratings have tripled for the RP show on Game Plus Television over the last year. How about tripled. That? We've been waiting for the we've been waiting for the data, and I know the guys are sitting there in the control room nodding their heads like bobbleheads if they've been told. So that's exciting, number one. Right on. And number two. Number two, remember this when people say the fall is the best time of the year in sports. I think those that say that are just baseball and football fans, which is fine. NFL is kicking off, CFL is in its second half, which they say is the unofficial kickoff, World Series. What about right now, bro? I'm looking at all the hockey games tonight. The NLL's getting to the nitty grit. There's two games there tonight. NHL obviously is in the home stretch. March Madness, and baseball's just starting. That's why I say this. This is the best time of the year. Do I have you convinced yet? Because I know you're one of those guys that says the fall's the best time. Well, yeah, because I love college football. I call, you know, college football across Canada, university football. Um, I love the NFL, the CFL. So I love all of that. But I think this is there, too, because the NHL playoffs, you're right. It is fun going to the rink. Um, I'm hoping to get down and see the Coachella Valley Firebirds at some point. They got a game against mm. the Texas Stars here over the weekend. It's their only home game while I'm here. But it's also tennis season. Indian Wells just happened. The majors are coming up. Uh, the Grand Slams in tennis. Uh, golf. The Masters is on the way right away. Um, NHL. Play. So there's a lot. Like th it's, This is a great season, too. This, the fall is there. The spring is there. Uh, those are easily the two best, but this is pretty good. Utah, Darren writes in and he says, March Madness games in Salt Lake City did not disappoint last night. I wonder if all the fans who traveled here could find a beer. LOL. How about that? Well, I mean, I'm a sober guy. I promote sober carpenter, non-alcoholic craft beer, so I'm not a beer guy. But that might be a reason why the NHL or any other pro league wouldn't want to go to Salt Lake City or Utah because of their restrictions around drinking. Let's be honest, drinking and sports kind of go in hand-in-hand. Hand, hand, in hand. Interestingly enough, was it yesterday or the day before, the poll question here was, is, how do you feel about sports betting? Good for sports, bad for sports. It ended around 50-50. So another polarizing topic there. And anything that keeps sports of interest, top of mind, and funds it, I would say, are pretty important things. Well, we have a minute, our poll question today, because it is a football Friday, and it is brought to you by our friends at Key Yorkton Kia. The poll question is, who is the face of the Canadian Football League? And I'll tell you why we're asking in a moment. But it's brought to you by Key Yorkton Kia. Unleash the future, the Kia EV6 GT at Key Yorkton Kia, where performance and innovation go hand in hand. Go to keyyorktonkia.com or call 306 783 2772 for more information. The 23 Kia EV6 GT, movement that inspires. Why are you asking what's the face of the CFL in the middle of March? Uh, because it's a football Friday, A, and B. On Jeopardy this week, host Ken Jennings asked a question under the category, I'll take big leagues for 500, please, Ken. Bing! In this league, the end zones are 20 yards deep, meaning Cody Fajardo, blah, 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 blah. What is the Canadian Football League? Ding! You got it right. That was on Jeopardy this week. Cody Fajardo was watching. That's led people to believe that the quarterback of Montreal is the face of the league. Sorry. I'm getting distracted because I'm getting texts from my guy, Gil, the agent to the stars, who I was at, at the Panthers game last night, and it's synced to my laptop. I never asked for my cell phone to be linked to my MacBook. <laughs> Have you had that stuff? Like, it just, all one day, it just happened. An update <laughs> happens, and all, I know. bing! What? Squirrel. Not Gil's fault, my fault. 
But anyways, I could have told you Cody Fajardo is the face of the Canadian Football League, and that's the thing is I'm unfortunately a soothsayer ahead of my time. It takes people a while to catch up. And they're realizing that Cody Fajardo is the face of the CFL. It's leading the poll, but the other options are Brady Oliveira, the Winnipeg running back, reigning most outstanding Canadian in the Canadian Football League. Uh, what else do you say? Vernon Adams Jr. Clark? Is that who we came up with? And other? I want to stop know. for a second and just say this. Because it burns my grits. <laughs> It is a Canadian thing, but I was thinking about this the other day. The American Hockey League is basically a hockey... It's the hockey version of the CFL. Fair? Can somebody play... You guys were talking about the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Like, you, you're aware of the AHL, and clearly our viewers are too, because they were writing in asking if you're going to go. Do they have a top American award in the American Hockey League? Because that seems very odd if they did. And yet in Canada, it's just the way that it is. And what if they mandated you had to have X amount of Americans on your roster in the American Hockey League? Because after all, we're the American Hockey League. They don't have that. <laughs> I just... I don't get it. I don't get it. Why is it so... Just the way that it is in Canada. We have to have a top Canadian in the CFL. Why do I have a problem <laughs> with it? We just chalk it up to... That's one of those great things that makes the Canadian Football League unique and Canadian. And it's really just an answer that doesn't give you an answer and just makes you content so you go about enjoying the games and doing your thing. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it is, like, I mean, it's important to protect the Canadians in the league. Um, but at the same time, you know, we say that, you know, and I say we as a general public, well, the Canadians are what keep it Canadian, and that's why we watch. And we don't really watch because... You know, again, we don't sit there and, and watch the game and see, oh, look at uh, Dad, they got seven Canadians on the field right now. You know, hey, look, that was an American that caught the touchdown. No, we just care if it was your team that caught the pass or if the other team made the play, right? That's all we really care about. But it is, it is something that's unique. The CFL will always be unique. I just, <laughs> I, it just annoys me because I think the Canadian players are as good as the American players, I do. And I can get into why in a second, but I just want to say Craig from the Hockey Hall of Fame's tuned in, Craig Campbell, probably because it's a football Friday. And he says, congrats, that is great news about the ratings. We all continue to enjoy and be entertained. That's right. Ratings have tripled from a year ago at this time, and a year ago, they doubled from the year before. How about that? So whatever the hell we're doing, and we don't even really know what we're doing, people seem to like that. BW, uh, just regarding drinking in Utah, BW in Utah writes in and says that there's a larger non-Mormon population in Salt Lake that has moved into the area in the last 10 to 15 years. <laughs> Can we stop talking about Utah and drinking and population demographics? I don't care. Enough. Jeff in Yorkton writes in and he says, promoting your local talent in the CFL can be a big marketing boost. Okay, fair, absolutely fair. But I'll say this, I, when I was at a seven-on-seven seven tournament Sunday morning, if you watched my social media, you'd have seen it. You probably did, Darren. It was the top flight, best high school, 5A football here in Florida. It was put on by Cardinal Gibbons. It was at Cardinal Gibbons. It's like my second home. And I'm sitting there watching these kids. I'm like, God, are they good. But here's the thing. The reason why Americans habitually are better than Canadians at football is because they play it year round, every day. And that's all. It's just reps. They're not superior athletes, in my opinion. That's all. That's what I think. And to be honest, I think any CFL person would agree. If um, now, and now Canadian youth are playing year round, and they're getting the schooling, but you're still seeing a lot of them go to the States and even high school, like a Joe, a Joe, who was on with us the other day. Nathan Rourke did the exact same thing. But that's the only reason. Agree or disagree? Deal or no deal? Yeah, opportunity to, to play more. Um, you know, we have great football people in Canada that know the game so well. Um, right. And, you know, we, that's why, you know, you see... 
Um, look at Football Canada and what we've done on the nationals. I say we because we're Canadians. What we've done on a national stage at the junior level, right? I think it's two or three time U19 world champions beating the US, trying to win it again. Because at a younger age, you haven't had a chance to have as many reps as when you become a pro. The older you get, the more reps you have. So the younger you are, it's natural to say, we're the gap between us having reps and the Americans is a lot smaller. And when you just put us up head to head, sure, we can play at that level. Uh, and you're right, like the, the older you get, the more reps they get and the less, you know, in Canada that there's available, obviously outdoor in game situations. It's the same way, you know, golfers too. A lot of it is population. But you can play golf year round down. So if naturally, you're going to be playing more. You're going to get better. I think it's, uh, it's pretty simple. It's quite amazing. Justin Spieth and Roy McIlroy live not even that far from me. This here is a sports mecca, but it's the weather. It's because you can do it year round. That's all. I'll tell you what. What's really going to be, what should I say? We'll prove a lot of things, I think, is flag football in the Olympics. If Canada can get its act together because they're currently having a bloody coup of the head of football Canada. I told you we weren't going to go down that road, and here's me. I just turned on that road. But if we can get <laughs> it, that figured out, and, and we will spend more time on it next segment if anybody cares. If we get our act together and sort it out football Canada-wise, I'd like to see Canada give the USA and all other countries a run for their money at the Olympics in flag football because the skills are the same. Rhonda in Swift Current writes in, and she says, because baseball is just getting going, she says, second best time of year, the best time of year, September, October, World Series time. I'm going to the last spring training game in Phoenix. Bring on the heat. That's from Rhonda. And she says, I'm not a basketball fan, so March Madness goes unnoticed at my house. Curling and spring training on TV here. And the RP show. I might add. Um, but again, it's the Rod Peterson show. So instead of trying to appeal to the masses, we're going to appeal to what appeals to us. And we're talking a little bit about everything. And I, I still... Do you claim when you won the March Madness bracket, we were the only two Canadians in the whole bracket. You won it. Was it skill or was it luck? Be honest. Oh, it's mostly luck, like 90% luck. Um, I spend, I, I'll be honest, like I am interested. So I hear a little bit and I kind of, I don't, okay, okay, I don't follow college basketball throughout the year, but I'm not completely in the dark on it either. So I see, I, I listen to some American sports talk that I really like, and they talk about college basketball at times throughout the year. So I kind of have a little bit of a gauge. And then obviously, the, the couple of weeks leading up, I actually listen to a lot of sports talk and read some articles, not purposely doing research, but I get an idea. Like I, a couple of things that I know, um, I know that, that Tennessee and Creighton both have really good defenses and are going to be a threat to potentially get into the final four. So I have them weighted a little bit heavier um, for those reasons. And there are three seeds and five seeds, I believe. So a little bit, but it's only about 10% scale. Ryan in New York, sorry, Ryan in Oshawa, close to New York, writes in on the Sober Carpenter text line on the Shohei Otani story I was reading earlier. He says, hmm, you think Otani would have this problem if he would have signed with the Jays? <laughs> LOL. Ah, we got to take a break here, but I'll say this. Does anybody know, including you, if this interpreter, the guy that's got in all the trouble, was with Otani before the Dodgers, or did the Dodgers assign him to Otani? You acted like he was like the Rodriguez coach for Tom Brady, that they're a package deal. Did I read that right? That's what I thought. I thought he was uh, Otani's guy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, the, then, yes, they would have the problem. He would have made it part of his deal to sign with the Blue Jays. Clark informing us that, in fact, they're a package deal. Shohei, uh, Shohei Otani and his interpreter, the guy that's got him in a whole whack of trouble. So, yes, it would have happened. Good question. But we got that answer snuffed out right away. 
We'll be right back here in hour two. Farhan Lalji is coming up live from the CFL Combine. We are on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. <laughs> We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Any further. In Landmark Cinemas, beginning today, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, the latest installment. And while you're there, reward your love of movies. Sign up for Landmark Extras for free. You can do it right at the theater. Get more of what you love, free movies, concession items, invitations to exclusive screenings, special events, and more. Or ahead of that, drop by their website, LandmarkCinemas.com, for uh, info or to sign up right there. Okay. Farhan Lalji joins us from the CFL Combine in Winnipeg. The viewers have a lot of questions. They're all excited to chat with you, Farhan. So before we get to those, how is it, man? Jim Barker looked like he was in Narnia football heaven. Is it for you, too? Yeah, absolutely. This is football palooza. You know, back when I used to coach a lot, I, I would kind of view this as half broadcast or half coaching clinic, right? 
Uh, and I, I feel like that here when, when I would go to NFL training camps and things like that. But this is awesome. You know, and the one thing with this event is that you can just see the talent level increase every year, whether it's the U sports guys that are doing a great job, you know, with more resources and their staffs and their training or the NCAA guys that are coming in or, you know, how the league has done a few things to kind of expand the talent pool a little bit. And, you know, guys getting eligible to take part in this as a Canadian that maybe wouldn't have in previous years. So it's good. And, and just from a networking standpoint to see all the CFL people. However, it's still Winnipeg. It's still cold. And you're still in Florida, which is BS, Rod. You should be here being cold with the rest of us. Sorry, my man. Next year, how about that? I did see you last uh, year at Edmonton, you said that and that was a lot of. Year too, I, I, buddy. I was there at Edmonton. Okay, I was okay. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all won't right. get it. He literally walked up to me and said, "Tell me you didn't come all the way from Florida for this." And I'm like, "Ah, I as far as you that. know, yeah." <laughs> I think the obvious, the obvious question for me here would be, who's standing out in your mind? Well, you know, there's a, there's a guy named Joel DeBlanco who's a linebacker and was just recently added to the draft a couple of weeks ago. And he's got a fairly storied career collegiately. He spent six years at the University of Cincinnati. You know, he had the extra time because of an injury season and a, and a COVID season. Um, and then was in the NFL for a little bit. And in fact, in 2022, he led the Seattle Seahawks in tackling during the preseason and then was a, a, was a late cut. Uh, spent last year playing spring football and is Canadian. His father is from Edmonton. Um, so, uh, you know, he, he uh, works and lives in the Seattle area currently and came up and everybody knew that, you know, he had a pretty good resume and you've got the Alex Singleton comparisons. Well, he shows up here, cut weight down to 230 and ran a low 4.6, high 4.5, 40 time. So this is a guy that has checked all the boxes. You know, he's done really well in interviews. Could go number one overall. If not, there's no way he gets out of the top three. So I think he's really impressed. There's been a couple of others. You know, you look at the receiving class. I think it's a good group. People were looking forward to seeing a Joe, a Joe, who's a kid from Alberta who uh, went down to Clemson originally and then, uh, you know, made his way to South Florida and then another college before declaring for the draft and didn't put up great 40 times and got injured. But there's some other receivers, uh, Dell Duncan Busby, who's uh, from uh, Minnesota, from um, uh, played at Bemidji State. You've got uh, Kevin Clericus from the uh, University of Connecticut. Kevin Mittal, who was the Heck Crichton Award winner two years ago at Laval, had a bit of an injury playing season last year, but is showing up and put uh, ran four five nine at, at 229 pounds so uh, there have been some really really good performances and it's a pretty good offensive line class as well i love how you glossed over a joe a joe just so you know farhan he was on this show two days ago and last okay. hour jim barker said he told a joe a joe if you don't get your act together you're going to be in the last chance you of life you said some other college we all know what that college was Right. Yeah. Right. They made a Netflix yeah, special no. about it. How much of a topic is a Joe a Joe at this combine? Let's be honest. Yeah, I know he is. Look, he's he's got a resume, and people were looking to see him dominate here. Right. Put up a good forty time. Do a great job in one on ones. Uh, you know, I think he tried to be humble and and contrite and kind of explain the situation that got him bouncing around from school to school in the U.S., which, quite frankly, is not that unusual anymore. You know, but in his case, you know, you went to Clemson and there was so much interest around his recruiting and when he went down there and Dabo Swinney had all these good things. And, and I talked to him about it and, I, and he said, you know, if I had a do-over, and he probably told this to your listeners uh, and yourself a couple of days ago, he said, if I had a do-over, I never would have left. I was too greedy. I, I was too immature. I wanted it now. I wasn't willing to be patient and took off and went to South Florida. And then he got injured and then kind of things trickled down from there. Um, you know, and that's a cautionary tale with a lot of these people. There's a culture right now in the U.S., of guys transferring, right? The portal is open and now it's not just an opportunity, it's now become fashionable to transfer. And, you know, we see it here because you see a lot of these guys that maybe started at the division one level and worked their way back to U sports or what have you. Um, so it becomes harder to pass judgment on these guys because it, it's happened so frequently now. So I don't think he's a bad kid, but this is gonna be a, a lot more challenging of a journey than I think he anticipated because the people at this combine are good. We know the people in the CFL are outstanding. So he's got some work to do. I think there's too much talent there physically for him not to get drafted. But he put himself in a situation when he got here where he could have gone into the first round. Now he might be literally like a, a fourth or a fifth round pick. Someone will take him, but he's going to have to really, really grind to get onto a CFL field anytime soon. Uh, a Joe, a Joe was ahead of his time. Let's, let's put it that way. Switching Ooh. schools. 
um, but he referred to himself in the third person through the whole interview the other day. That was my You didn't do that away. after. So I'm not you didn't, you didn't do that after. Okay. So Okay. Okay, fair. Okay, you brought up U.S. football, and our yeah. viewers were writing in about the wealth of talent in American football. Why are there only five to seven superstar NFL quarterbacks? Should there not be more based on sheer numbers? How would you answer that? It's the hardest position in sports, period, full stop. If you're a Canadian, don't tell me it's goalie because it's not. They don't need to process and have, you know, these guys coming at them, uh, you know, 250-pound defensive linemen where they're trying to take their head off before they can get the ball down the field in three seconds, right? So it is the toughest position in sports. And because of that, there is such a need. And the NFL puts players in a position where they overdraft them put them into games before they're ready. You know, there was a time when it was okay to not be a starting quarterback at the NCAA level until your junior season. Well, that doesn't happen now. If you're not a starter early, you're transferring, right? And these guys bounce. And then sometimes you'll get the other scenario where you'll get a guy like a, a Trey Lance who plays 17 collegiate games and people just looked at the talent and said, okay, we're going to draft you. So now they haven't even played enough at the collegiate level. So, you know, and then teams give up a King's ransom to get these guys. They'll trade up, right? I mean, I remember like it was yesterday, Jared Goff and Carson Wentz's draft year. And at the end of the college football season, neither one of these players were ranked in the top 10. They weren't given a top 10 grade. By the time they went through the offseason underwear Olympics and pro days and combines and everything like that, not only did these guys go one and two in the draft, but both teams that took them traded a ton of picks to go up and get them. So now there's tons of pressure. They've got to go in and play early. You don't get a chance to sit and wait for a year like Patrick Mahomes did. You know, those situations are few and far between, and a lot of people just aren't ready for it. And they'll move on quick, right? I mean, you know, you look at um, Zach Wilson, right? Uh, guy got elevated, you know, too high. He never should have been drafted that high. And he gets drafted, all this expectation. He plays early. And when you fail, you don't often get a second chance, right? Like the Baker Mayfields, and even Sam Darnold, who's still getting an opportunity as a backup, like those become rarer and rarer. You just get yourself bounced out of the league very quickly. So it's a difficult situation. You look at those 2021 and 2022 draft classes, and you've got one guy, Trevor Lawrence, who's starting at a reasonable level with his team. Everybody else has been traded or just teams have moved on, right? I mean, so it is tough and teams aren't going to wait because if you wait and you're wrong in the quarterback, you get fired. I love how when we get together and have time, we can talk for hours. I'll only ask you one more. Yeah. Because you're on the West Coast and you cover the Seahawks as much as you do, can you sum up why the Seahawks and Russell Wilson divorce had to happen? And, 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 and because of that, did you see the Denver thing coming? Two and three, oh, yeah. how do you think he'll fare in Pittsburgh? How do you think he'll fare in Pittsburgh? Well, look, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, that needed to end. Um, he was trying to exert far too much influence in that building above the player level. Uh, it, he was alienating his teammates. He was alienating the entire organization. That needed to end. And then he went to Denver, and I was there the first day of training camp two years ago in Denver, and his reputation had preceded him. The players there were all kind of holding their breath a little bit of what they were going to get. You know, again, had office access up on the second floor, um, complete control of what was going on in that building because you had a rookie head coach in Nathaniel Hackett, and that's just not what you want. And everything was about his legacy. He got humbled last year, but obviously the relationship between he and Sean Payton soured so much that even though he had been humbled and improved slightly, they needed to move on because the coach knew that that wasn't going to be his guy. He's going to go to Pittsburgh, and Mike Tomlin is going to put up with nothing. There will be no social media team. There will be no you know quarterback coach access into the building. Like there, There's going to be so much change for him because it's not about his legacy anymore it's about salvaging his career so i think the steelers are going to get the best out of russell wilson um, i still think he's got some good football left i don't think he's got any great football left but he'll be better than kenny pickett and i think it'll be good for justin fields to come into a situation where maybe you can work with a guy uh, that does have some experience and, and justin fields might be the long-term answer but see what pittsburgh is doing is they're building out their roster and i think the patriots who have nathan Rourke in their building should take some advice there or take some, you know, some, uh, uh, learn a lesson there because you don't want to put a quarterback into a bad situation because they'll never succeed and you'll never get them back. It won't get figured out like Justin Fields in Chicago. Pittsburgh is now building out their roster. 
and they're trying to put the quarterback onto the best team possible as opposed to getting the quarterback figured out early, but your team sucks and the quarterback's never going to get developed. And that's what could potentially happen in a place like New England if they draft a quarterback high. Let Jacoby Brissett and Nathan Rourke carry the ball for a year. Trade back, get additional draft picks, and build that horrific roster into something better. And then if you want to inject the quarterback later, you can. Of course, if that happens, we know Nathan Rourke will never give the job back because he'll be so good. But, you know, so I like what Pittsburgh's doing, and I think they'll get the best out of Russell Wilson. Sounds great, doesn't it? If it was that easy, everybody would do it. It's win now. So much pressure. Right? So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, much yeah. pressure on these teams yeah. to go get a guy early. And this is a good quarterback class, and next year's isn't viewed as one. So, And, and as we're talking about quarterbacks, because I know you got to run, keep an eye on Casey Bauman, the kid that's out here. Um, played yeah. at Montana State, played at Augustana at the Division II level. He is ripping it. Looking forward to seeing him in team drills and one-on-ones. And he's a skyscraper too, right? Six foot six, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Farhan, thanks for the time, brother. Enjoy Winnipeg. All right, take care, my friend. We'll be thinking of you in Florida. Farhan Lalji, live from the CFL Combine in the Slurpee capital, Peg City. Um, we'll break now. Is that cool with you all there? Bingo. And we'll bring the moose back. We got a, all right. We got a sports update to get to. Your comments. And overtime on the way for overtime hockey lanes out of Calgary, where today is their kids' camp. I hope they have us on the televisions there. Hi, kids. I know Randy and Michelle will be too busy to be watching the program today. They're running around running their player development camp at Overtime Hockey Lanes. And if you got nothing better to do, why don't you head over there and just see what they do because they got their summer camp schedule, uh, summer camps coming up. Well, they'll be here before you know it. We'll be right back on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. I'm Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist, and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Hi, my name is Logan Stadkoven. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. 
please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Oh, yeah, he's back. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Football Friday continues. Hope you're having as much fun as we are. I overwhelmed somewhat at all the things that are going on. Not as bad as a week ago at this time, but there's still a lot going on. Please welcome the moose back in here. Somehow or another, my lighting got tilted. I don't know. I'm ready for the weekend. How about you, Moose? Before we go any further and delve back into the sports talk, I'll fix my light. What do you got going on this weekend? Yeah, I'm ready for the weekend. Uh, going to do a little bit of golfing. Got March Madness on the TV. But more importantly, I wanted to just, you know, you, you talked about your MacBook going off. At the home studio in, in, yeah. in, the, GT, in the GTA, I've uh, picked up Leanne's old MacBook, and I'm using that. And I'm logged in, and all of a sudden, it's the same thing. Ding, ding. I'm getting all her text messages. So I'm like, we got to shut this off. So we log out. I, we, we're, she's like, you got to create your own profile so you won't get my text messages. So I log in my own profile. Oh. Well, next thing I know, ding, ding, I'm getting my own text messages. I'm like, how did that happen? Oh, and that reminds me. Okay. Okay. I'm sitting here trying to find something for the sports update because there are a million things we could talk about and i got these all written down Mm -hmm. just today alone sports schedule nhl four games tonight and we will play breakaway bets coming up major league baseball blue jays against the red sox this afternoon and shohei otani's interpreter's ass is grass that's the news there nba shea gilgis alexander is in toronto basically his hometown Ah, uh, sorry, he's from Hamilton. I, understand, I know that's different than Toronto. With Oak City at the Raptors. March Madness, FAU playing Northwestern. FAU is losing, by the way. 16 turnovers in the game for the Owls. Go Owls. NLL tonight, Buffalo at Panther City. Albany, Albany. Sorry, Chris from the Bronx. He's from Albany. Albany at Calgary. Tomorrow. Saskatchewan at New York said no one ever, but it's happening. Saskatchewan at New York, Saturday. Dub, ton of games tonight. They're honoring the 1974 Pats. SJ playoffs open tonight with four games. And then this. Welsh rugby star Lewis Rees Zamet was dripping sweat and still catching his breath after finishing up receiving drills when several NFL scouts approached him at the University of South Florida's Pro Day on Thursday. Rees Zamet politely answered question after question before walking off to answer more to reporters. One of the best wingers in rugby now was the center of attention on a football field instead of a pitch. So a rugby player at South Florida's Pro Day for NFL scouts Again, you can pick what you like better, fall or spring, for best time of year, but don't say that they are not both busy. I like this better than the fall, but that's just me. It's an insane time, and my point is we can't keep up with everything. We'd be doing a 24-hour show, so we can only talk about what we're interested in, which is a lot of everything, but not a whole lot of anything. And furthermore, how I got on this plane was I got a call yesterday from an old-time buddy of mine, Reg Howard. He's a mover and a shaker, big time. I don't think you've ever met Reg, but he's just one of those business guys, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just to smoke three packs a day. <laughs> just to sell like, sell, 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 man. Always, always, ABC, always be closing. 
and he called me the other day, and he's like, Rod, we need your help. I know the RP show is the best thing going. We need your help for Wolseley to win the Craft Hockeyville contest. And here's how we're going to do it. But he's selling it to me, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Reg, you don't got to sell me on Wolseley. If you need my help, you got it, bro. What do you need? Right? They got the oldest ice plant, artificial ice plant in North America. But this is Reg. He's a salesman. I don't know if that's true or not, but he's very convincing. Sounds like he sounded very convincing when he said it's the oldest ice plant in North America. I'm like, well, we got to help, right? So you're going to be hearing the point is he's on his iPad. He hung up on me. He's got his iPhone. He's like, I'm sorry. He's old. He's retired now. And he goes, I can't keep up with this technology. I said, at least you're trying. You know what I mean? Because your dad's trying. How's your dad with the iPhone, Darren? How's he doing? Oh, my. He's a whiz with the iPhone. You know, it is insane how great he is with the iPhone and, and with, the, with the technology. After he resisted it for decades, <laughs> he thought it was the worst thing in the world. And now it's the greatest. And honestly, it's, it's great for him and I because we don't get a lot of time to chat on the phone. Um, you know, He's a dad. How, how sentimental was your dad talking on the phone, you know, that kind of thing. But, but texting, writing on the, on, on the Internet, amazing. You know, uh, it's a great way to stay in touch. He's great with it. Sentimental and my dad have never been said in the same sentence. <laughs> so I get oh, you. God. But for... Our audience, which on television in Canada, here's your reminder, we're number one in the 55-plus age demographic. We own it. Owns. So they'll want, there's a lot of older people sitting here nodding their head right now. They get it. But we got my, I got my dad a smartphone. It lasted a day. We got my mama a smartphone, and she asked me, she's like, take me back to the store and get, I want my flip phone back. And I'm like, no, mom, you need to learn it. No, as soon as I left, she went on her own, went and got it back. <laughs> she just wouldn't do it. So, no. And it's quite a funny that you would bring that up because Randy Nickel, I read his comment in earlier the other day. He, uh, sorry, earlier this show, Randy was talking about our poll question and who's the face of the CFL. And he's like, the three guys you mentioned are all former Ryder quarterbacks. Way to go, Riders. Cody Fajardo, Zach Caleros, and Vernon Adams Jr. And I said, yeah, what a, I digress. But Randy brought up my dad because he knew my dad way back in the day because his dad owned the Pats. He was one of the owners, and my dad worked for the Pats. So Randy said to me, he's like, I love watching your show. You remind me a lot of your dad, but you're way more emotional than your dad. Like, your dad was never as wound up as you get. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> if you put a, ca put a camera on Jim Peterson uh, for two hours a day, I think you'd be surprised what you saw. You know what I mean? But uh, ah, my dad was a lot more like you. He, he wasn't as much hard on his uh, sleeve as me. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. But we, it's funny. We talk about um, having a drama a TV show on Netflix or Crave about you and mine, about our life and this show. And can you imagine the flashbacks? You know how they go to like 20, 30 years ago, your upbringing? The flashbacks of you and your dad would get to learn all about them. The co-host sticks and all the rest. I think those would be uh, entertaining episodes. Well, let me just say, because it's Friday and it's free for all Friday and it's whatever the hell we want to talk about. I said to my dad, can you imagine dad back in the day when we used to do cattle, as we said, and that was castrate calves. Us three boys, we all had a job and mine was, mine was to cut the calf out of the herd direct him up towards the chute. It was my brother Reed's job to push them up the chute. And he put on knee pads, a hockey Cooperall girdle, and a can to push those calves up. And that was Reed. And then Lee's job was to put them in the, whatever you want to call it, where they clinch their neck like this, flip the table over, and then Lee would cut his nuts off. And my dad <laughs> would sit in the truck and laugh. That's what he would do. He would sit and laugh. He'd watch the whole thing. And I said, Dad, can you imagine, like, those rodeos that we used to have? Like, unsanctioned rodeos trying to pull this off? If they put a camera on that? Oh, my God, it would put America's funniest home videos to shame. And my dad was like, 
I don't think anybody would tune in to watch us castrate calves. Ah, you'd be surprised. Okay. But, I, but here's the thing. My bank is calling me on my Canadian phone. I still have two. And it's like, I'm not here. I can't answer it now. I'm on television, for God's sakes. That's the problem with today. We need you. We need you now. Yeah, that doesn't work for me, bro. You know, that's the problem with society today. And you wonder why everybody's so friggin' neurotic. When we come back, breakaway bets, I promise. Don't go anywhere, Moose. One more segment, and then you're free to enjoy Palm Springs for the weekend. We'll be right back on Game okay. Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. Maybe. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, I'm taking a break. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Foreigner, live in Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner, with special guest, Headpins. Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. this look familiar your fans deserve an incredible arena experience it's time for an upgrade stunning graphics revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology let us help you find the best solution for your facility bdg always delivering the best fan experience Hi, my name is Logan Stadkoven. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. <laughs> if it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. 
Here we go. And it's a rainy South Florida studio, as you can see and maybe hear, but that's fine. Hitting in, looks like a Netflix day and night. Overtime is brought to you by our friends at Overtime Hockey Lanes in Calgary. Please bring the moose back in for one final segment. Uh, just regarding the story of the last segment. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? What do you got? <laughs> I've been hyperventilating for four minutes about how we went to break. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. Ron in funny. Calgary funny. writes in 902-518-3033. Sober Carpenter text line. Ron in Calgary says, you truly are a Saskatchewan farm boy. As advertised. <laughs> No lies on this story, on this show, at all. Uh, whether you like me or you don't, you get what you get. And he says, live TV, you and Moose do it well. LOL, <laughs> your last break. Hey, it is what it is. They went for a break, one break too early for the weekend. Um, <laughs> what? So, what's so funny about it? No, it's just, Darren's it's, laugh it's is just funny. I don't it is. I don't know if it's lack of sleep, you know, finally catching up, but uh, <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> but it's, you That's know, it's funny. It probably it's, is. it's one break, you know, in 1,200 shows, you know, that we've had it, but it's just, it's just funny. Live TV, we roll. One. That reminds me, by the way, <laughs> for the guys flying the Millennium Falcon, assuming you are still there, Clark, Bingo. Ryan, Jordan, whomever. Bob, sure. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Next week, I got the guy's number here. Ah, Tuesday morning, Clark, let's write it down. We are a team around here. Weber, what's his first name? Weber, B, 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 B. Vance Weber. Tuesday, 10.35 a.m. SAS time, 12.35 p.m. Eastern. Vance Weber will be joining us from Wolseley to talk about Kraft Hockeyville and how we're going to get uh, Wolseley to win it. So... Hour one, segment three, Vance Weber. I'll give you the details. You, Clark. E oh, okay. Then it's hour two. Whatever. We'll get it figured out. I'll send you all the info. Um, so that's one thing. I'm just cleaning out the comments here before the weekend. Here in Overtime, brought to you by Overtime Hockey Lanes, where they're too busy to watch the show today. I get it, because it's their player <laughs> development day. I don't even remember. Like... I got this cold, so I'm still out of it. Man, you're sleep depraved. I'm sick. <laughs> Eyeballs hurt. Hair hurts. Mm -hmm. Brain fog. Rob in Cold Lake, Alberta writes in and he says, anytime a Canadian does well in anything, it's pointed out that they are a Canuck. It stems from the Canadian complex that we are inferior. It doesn't matter. It's all entertainment. Here's the thing that pisses me off about that. It's reverse psychology. I don't think we're second best at anything, so why do we need an award to single it out? It pisses me off. <sighs> do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want yeah. anybody here to know that I'm Canadian. I don't care. Like, my nickname in my club is, Canada, is Canada. But I'm like, it's, I don't want special treatment, man. I'm just one of y'all. Right? That's the one thing that I don't get. Um... Brady writes in from Saskatoon, and he says, Hey, Rod, it's been a long time since I've texted in. Who's your pick to win the WHL championship? And he says, Caitlin Clark in March Madness is madness in itself. That will be must-watch TV. And says, if Cody Fajardo continues to play like he did last season, he will continue to be the face of the CFL. Thank you, Brady. I think he always will be. I really love Cody Fajardo. What I say earlier, good always wins. I was wishing you were on with me earlier this week when I mentioned that President Joe Biden uh, announced his bracket. And Obama used to do it too, right? I'm sure every president has. But Biden picked South Carolina to win the women's NCAA crown. And I'm like, I couldn't do politics. You'd be far better at it than me. Because my first thought was, why do you hate Caitlin Clark? That you're not picking Iowa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can't. How do they do it? I know. I don't get I don't I don't know. get it, man. I know. You just have to say, you know, make up some reason and, and talk your way out of it. But, you know, in Wolseley, we were auctioning off uh, in a Calcutta style all the different countries for the world championship of curling. And, when they, and, and every time the DJ would play the anthem of the country. And uh, so 
whoever bought the USA and John Schuster, they played the American anthem. And I said on the mic to everybody, I said, I'm half expecting Joe Biden to sleepwalk his way into the auditorium here tonight when I hear the anthem playing. <laughs> it was it was kind of funny. They all got a laugh out of that. It is good, isn't it? Yes. Um, we got some good stuff here. Rhonda and Swift Current, she's got a good one. Uh, she just sent this. Breaking news, this just in. Pete Rose now blames his interpreter for his gambling habits. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir. Uh, James in Calgary writes in, and this is important. I think people hear this. He says, how long till the NFL becomes flag football? I feel personally we are less than 10 years from no hitting the quarterback. You have to pull his flag. You need to understand something. And anybody that, ha and I've been hearing that argument for a long time that eventually there will be no hitting. You need to understand. And Darren's down in California. I would suggest you go to your local high school or local park and watch Pop Warner football. I'll be honest with you. The inner city kids and some of the upper class kids, but mostly the inner city, don't care about their safety. It's just a fact. They don't care. So it becomes like fighting in hockey. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But guess what? Somebody will. They're never going to be taking contact out of football. That's it. That's my take. I've seen it first. I'd heard it first, and I've seen it firsthand. Agree or disagree? Yeah, I don't think it will come out of the game. But if it does, I mean, everything that's happened has been so gradual that we still think football is really entertaining, and we still think it's a physical game. And it's not nearly as physical as it was 20 years ago. So. As long as the games are entertaining, we'll all still watch. Well, and beyond, I'll be honest. I mean, things have changed. Enjoy what things are now, folks, because eventually it, it, it might be flag football. But I'll be honest with you, there's nothing wrong with flag football. You and I called it with Serena and Charlotte. And when it's played well competitively and players care, unlike the NFL All-Star game, it actually is highly entertaining. Right, but it needs to be played well. Okay, we never got into the Football Canada stuff, and that's probably a godsend. Moose, say hey to your gal and have a great uh, weekend in California. We'll see you Monday. You bet. Have a great weekend. Thanks to uh, our crew at IKS, and thanks to Farhan JB. We'll see you uh, Monday, noon Eastern, here on Game Plus and Key Radio. Who has more fun than us? <laughs>